All right. <clears throat> Greetings, users. Welcome back again. Um, last time we talked about the little uh, setup we can get going with all these machines, how you can, you know, feed them in with a permanent, basically a sand generator here. <laughs> he's just going to keep making sand until he's got nowhere else to stick it. And I can use that to make rich slag, which I can use to make three ingots out of two of my dust here. So I'm, I'm slowly growing my supply here with this setup. But what I'd like to do... Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to turn on my engines from from my lava. <sighs> See, that's the problem with these little engines here. These little redstone engines, they're not, not you know, they're they're nice little workhorses that you can just kind of turn them on and leave them running. I mean, I mean, hell, that's pretty much what I've got going over here with yeah, see, my this old lava production that we had, it's just going constantly and as long as it's connected to something, it's not going to blow up, which is really nice because you can kind of set it and forget it. The only problem is is that I think I think that creates a little bit of lag, but I could be wrong. <laughs> you know, having that machine constantly going, and and so I like to turn them off a lot, and then I forget I turned them off, and now look, I've drained my lines of all of all my lava, except for that little bit right there that keeps bouncing around. So all these machines, I mean, they're they're full for the most part, but I guess these are the only ones I've been using, these little guys. So they're almost out of fuel. And before I do this, I I want to show you guys a different way to um, a different way to move liquids and to move energy around um, with with the thermal expansion mod that we've been talking about. So I, I figured this is this is a really easy and and less cost blah, <laughs> less resource intensive way of making pipes and things that you can that you can pump in your machines. But there is a way to do it with thermal expansion. So what we have to do is we have to make these little things that I like to call, or that are called, <laughs> I like to call them uh, super pipes. Um, they're called liquid ducts. Um, L U Q or L I Q. There we go. Let's see if I can spell today. Liquid ducts. So now what we got here are basically. Um, Thermal expansion piping. Let's go and get out of creative mode before I end up killing myself here. Or breaking my machines. So we're going to drop down back in normal mode. Now, if you're at the level now here where you're ready to start replacing everything with these liquid pipes, liquid ducts, what I would definitely recommend is I, I'd recommend upgrading from this little, this little wrench here. The time that we start getting... The new upgraded super powerful stuff. What we need is a prototype Omni wrench. Now this bad boy, he's a little expensive. He's a little expensive. What we're gonna need here is we're gonna need two diamond. We're gonna need a gold ingot, <laughs> and we're gonna need a cyan wool. Why it needs specifically a cyan wool, I don't know. I guess it's you know fancy coloring. Uh, so you gotta justify the the coloring of the production of it here. Now this little guy is awesome because it works just like your regular wrench. It'll let you, you know, turn your machines around, you know, if you've got pipes going backwards. It'll actually even let you rotate a chest. <laughs> Did you see that? So now it opens this way instead of opening out this way. Keep clicking it and it rotates back around. All right, now what this will do is it'll actually let you, um, it'll let you pick up these liquid ducts a lot easier. Um, so if we do... We put a liquid duct on there. As you can see, it's got this really cool, really cool look to it. So I've connected all these, and I connect it out here. It actually will connect to your existing pipes um, if you don't have enough to make right now. Um, but with this wrench, you hold down shift. You hold down your sneak button, and you right-click it. Boom. Instantly breaks it. It's awesome. So we're going to get ready to replace all these, but let's show you how you make that first. So we've got our liquid duct here. Let's look up our rest. Oh, not our uses. We want to look up the recipe. Now, what we're going to need is we're going to need two copper ingots, and we're going to need hardened glass. Now, hardened glass is actually not made of glass at all. <laughs> you don't use sand. You don't use glass. In order to get hardened glass, what you have to do is get your smelter. And you have to smelt down two pieces of a pulverized obsidian, obsidian dust, basically, and a lead ingot. Now, I believe you can also use lead dust if you really want. Um... So let's say you wanted to pulverize a piece of lead down into two dust, or you wanted to smelt a piece of lead down into two dust. You can certainly do that. Either way, you end up with two pieces of hardened glass. Now, 
obviously to make the pulverized obsidian all we're going to do is put a piece of obsidian in our pulverizer and it breaks it down so again we've got our pulverizer here we put the obsidian in drop it down here now we'd have to probably stop one of these machines here um, since what we have is we have an automated process going right we've got sand comes down uh, you smelt over into rich slag and then smelt the ingots out so this is kind of an automated process but we can just stop this real quick you know maybe turn this off so that it's not there we go turn that off so it's not exporting you know pumping stuff out and then we can go ahead and do what we've got to do put our obsidian and our lead and then we get our hardened glass out so once you get your hardened glass and your copper and you make a bunch of these pipes what we do is we start hooking these things up so let's tear down all these pipes boom boom stick these bad boys in here it's really sweet now what's really cool about oh see look at that i misplaced that one all right shift right click boom it's gone what's really cool about these guys is um as you can tell, it's not it's not filling up with pipes. So most people would throw an engine down here, thinking I got power these things, right? You know, uh, it's, it, it's just like those other pipes. What we can do is we can just simply right click on these. As you can see, it it turns them from solid to a little uh, open source. Now what this does, this turns them into suction pipes. So now, all we have to do is put down something like our redstone wiring, or maybe our jacketed wire that I threw over here. Oh, look at that! I've got jacketed wire here that I was using for, uh, for the redstone engines. So once we dig down here and get it all... Alright, so then we're going to place it back directly underneath the pipes. And what that'll do is it'll hook into... Um, <laughs> the only drawback is that you can't actually hook them. It won't power it from the block. Oh, yeah, it will. Oh, I see what it did. <laughs> My lever here, it actually only opened up this one pipe. So with these levers, a lot of times what you have to do is drop them onto the same plane as the uh, as the jacketed. See how it extended a little bit further? Now, it's, now the lever's connected to the jacketed wire. So when I flick this... All of these become suction pipes now, and they are activated with redstone signal, and so now it's filled up our lines, and all of our machines are ready to go, waiting for energy, waiting for power. So let's go ahead and let's hook these back up again, now that I've figured out why our machines tried to explode. And so now we've got really awesome piping, which I just think I just think it looks so much cooler, too, than, than the Buildcraft pipes. Because it doesn't have the <laughs> the little waterproofing marks and stuff. So now we're also going to need to do this here. So let's just break these off. Oops. And what I love about these pipes also is that whenever you, you know, yes, we have to put the redstone signal when we connect them to those tanks, but whenever we connect to the back of a machine, it'll automatically suck it out. We don't have to do anything because the machine itself is working like a pump. It's pumping outward into the back of this. You don't even have to, I don't even actually have to flip this around. It, it helps just so you know which direction is flowing, but you actually don't have to do that. Um, I'm stuck in here. There we go. Okay. So we've got, we've got cool piping set up now. Now, if only there was a way I could, uh, if only a way I could revamp this power supply system. That would be awesome because I hate how these pipes are always exploding. Let's turn this off. Let's turn that off. Because we've got room for all of our energy to go places, right? Yeah, yeah, we've got plenty of energy there. Well, there is a way that we can completely take out all of these buildcraft pipes and use thermal expansion pipes. Let's take all these out. Now, what kind of pipe is this on you're asking? Well, it's called redstone conductive pipe. Uh, a redstone conduit, rather. I'm sorry. Uh, basically, what it does is they are pipes that are filled with molten redstone. <laughs> yeah, imagine heating redstone so much that it turns into a liquid state and then fusing, infusing it into pipes um, that then conduct electricity in essence is what it is so let's look this up here real quick red 
redstone. Uh, da -da -da, redstone tube. Redstone energy conduit. There we go. Let's get a stack of those. So these guys, boom, plug them onto your engines. Boom, boom, boom. See, now what we've done is we have officially found ways to control and contain energy uh, without the risk of exploding. What these guys do is, of course, they will um, store up energy. Now, if you leave your engines running without, you know, proper machines to ex you know to use the energy what you are doing is these engines will only store so much electricity or so much stored energy they'll only store up so much before you're just running the engine for no reason so it, it does bleed off however that these engine these piping here conduits will not explode now that whenever you hook them up to an engine <laughs> i learned this the hard way that you need to make sure that these are set to yellow which is extraction as you can see it's got um the little it basically almost looks like an arrow, if that makes sense. So it's an arrow going out, going out, going out. Let's make sure to do this on all the pipes here. And boom, now we're set to extract all of these. Now what you can also make is what's called a redstone energy cell. Now this bad boy will store up all your excess energy for you. And you can place it just like any block. Stick it anywhere you want, boom. Let's plop it down. And then what we're going to do is, let's see, how do we want to wrap up these? Let's, let's go down. We're going to go down in the ground for these guys. Kind of hide our wiring a bit. Boom, boom, boom. So naturally, if we want the engines, we're yellow, right? So we're sucking out of the engines, basically, and we're pumping into... The redstone engine now or redstone energy cell which is like a battery now the redstone energy battery we got to come out of it and then go into the machines which are both blue so i think we got that set up right so let's hold shift down now of course if you guys weren't aware you can hold down shift and place it on normally if i right click that it's going to open up the interface for it which as you can see has the uh energy storage now it also lets you control the speed at which the energy comes in and the speed at which the energy goes out so you can actually ramp that thing up to 100 mill, mill joules, uh, Minecraft joules per tick. Or you can throttle it back to, let's say, 5. Now if you hold down Shift, you'll actually, I'm sorry, Shift right click will go by 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, so now we're, we're pulling that off. Uh-oh, almost forgot to pull that off. There we go. So now we've got all of our machines hooked up with power. I'm sorry, not quite all of them. I still need to run one of these over here to our magma crucible bada bing bada boom so now turn our engines on what you'll see is this guy sucks up power <laughs> just in time to spit it back out to these others <laughs> so what I actually like to do you know what let's do this let's bring this guy up here uh, same thing with these you gotta hold shift and right click Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig this up real quick like to do, 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 do. I'm going to do this because what I want to show you is how I can uh, set up a little interface. All right, so if we shift right click, you'll hold this battery. What you'll see is that any kind of stored energy that's in it, it says it has 2,191 Mil Minecraft jewels in it right now. So we can hold that. We can put it out here um, so that you know what? That's not going to work because we need to have an in inlet and an outlet. So this is going to be our outlet going to come down into these machines and then this one's going to be our inlet oops okay this will be in from our machines and then out to our machines Let's see is that what I wanted to do Well, it's a little bit convoluted, but the, the 
point is, is that this can actually be a, uh, a running energy gauge for how much power you have in your system. <clears throat> so you guys have to check out the one that I set up on the fan server here because I ended up putting one of these in the center with all my machines spread out on both sides. And then basically all I got to do is see how much power I have in reserve. And then when this thing starts getting low, I flick on my engines to recharge it. So, now of course this isn't actually going to suck energy out of a machine. I don't believe it has a capability to do that. It only comes from the redstone um, energy conduits and stuff. So, so what we've done is we've essentially safe-proofed almost our entire our entire operation here. We've got lava pumping into our machines, and these are controlled just by a simple redstone signal. There's no, you know, there's no additional engines needed. Uh, then we've got them pumping out into these redstone energy conduits, which won't blow up. <laughs> and we've even got a nice battery now, so we can start building up some excess power. Got all these guys over here, which, look at that, we've already started controlling our excess. Uh, because all these machines are now full of energy. Look at that. And this little guy's just going to use a little bit at a time. <sighs> this magma crucible is probably one of the, the heaviest hitters. It's going to use up a lot of your energy, however, it's really slow. So the problem is, is that you're actually um, building up energy a lot faster than you can make it. So you can actually string this in and make about three or four uh, magma crucibles if you really wanted. So again, uh, this is another uh, extremely useful technique for managing your, not only managing your ore resources uh, and resource development, but it also helps manage your power. Uh, because the last thing you want to do is be wasting energy. Um, if you're like me, then, you know, you, you hate having to count out your ores in a groups of eight so that you can make sure that each time you use a coal or a charcoal, you've got eight pieces to use it on. You're not wasting that energy. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. If, you know, if you guys enjoyed it, let me know. <laughs> Tune in next time. Thanks, guys. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I appreciate the support. If you if you enjoyed what you what you saw, give me a like, maybe subscribe. Um, hopefully, there's going to be a lot more of these videos coming. And of course, if there's anything uh, you guys would like to see in future episodes, I've actually included uh, a Google form down below in the description that you guys can fill out for uh, suggestions slash feedback. So you guys tell me how I'm doing and what you guys like. Uh, I appreciate all the support and. Stay tuned for more.